From a big heat wave to tropical trouble trying to brew up, one model today showing our first hurricane is going to develop in the next 10 days. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice tracking all this here for you and there is a lot to look at right now, including the potential that within the next week we have not only our first uh, hurricane developing deeper out off the coast of Africa and moving toward the west, but we also have a dangerous heat wave developing across the southeastern United States. I mean, this this thing is really going to take hold of areas like Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, into Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and just lock in. And some of the numbers that I'm seeing here are going to break records across many cities in the southeast, not just one or two, but likely many, many areas as we move forward here. So a lot to watch, including what's going on right now across the Gulf. Let's get right to it. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please consider liking this video. Let me know in the comment section where you're watching from and subscribe to this channel. I give you an early look at all things weather and I keep uh, it uh, real. I'm going to let you know what I see when I'm seeing it. I'm also not going to hype anything, but I'll be sure to tell you when I see something that needs to, to have your attention so that you can keep your family safe. And right now we've been monitoring all this mess toward Florida, uh, really the panhandle today moving west. This is a big slug of moisture that has still highlighted at this hour uh, for possible tropical development. But as you see above my head, one of the bigger headlines that you're going to see in most cities is the fact that uh, warm boundaries lifting north again, and many of us are going to be very, very hot tomorrow, like Walhalla, 93 degrees, just one of the many cities in the southeast. It'll be back to bacon tomorrow. The storm chances are going to be low, though. Let's map out this model here, show you what I'm looking at. This slug of moisture moving toward the west still has a window of opportunity to kind of uh, spur up into a named tropical system, but it's running out of time and it's running out of real estate. Looks like it's going to go into East Texas and the Louisiana and then move move up toward the north and that's when it will be gone and so long right as far as the moisture is concerned across the southeast notice those rain showers and some storms firing up later tonight in some locations that's as a boundary lifts in and brings in warmer and more muggy air to many areas because this is what's heading in a big heat dome is settling in across a large part of the south as we go into saturday especially saturdays when it's just next level and folks i get this so often and frankly it's it's kind of crazy to hear we are sitting right now at the hottest part of the year and people will say it's a heat wave is supposed to be hot come on talk about something else in the weather no heat is by far the most uh deadly weather event that we have if you combine all the hurricane and all the tornado deaths on any given year an average year um, you would have more heat related deaths each year and it's and it's really sad this the stories range from tragic stories of of young kids infants and the ranges up to elderly that are trapped in homes uh, that lose air conditioning and and it's just really really tragic uh, the kind of things that happen in, in heat waves top health athletes. You, you, you see these stories of middle schoolers, high schoolers that are just in the fittest shape of their life, uh, get into these hot situations outside where uh, it just takes its toll. And we just don't want to see that. So my goal here is to let you know how hot it's going to be and for how long so that you can mitigate that by doing earlier practices, later practices. Some of you watching right now may be a coach, may have the ear of a coach. Please take this seriously. This is not just a, a a warm street coming in. Oh, you know, suck it up. It's summertime. No, this this is a dangerous kind of heat wave. Let me show you why. It's going to sit here, this big ridge, just doubling down Saturday. Here's Sunday. The the anomalies here, the deeper the red is, the higher the pressure. This thing is just locked in. It says we're not going anywhere. This goes into Monday. Monday goes into Tuesday. And this thing just doesn't want to budge. Now, with it comes dry weather. Yeah, we're going to be humid. Yeah, we're going to be hot. But with sinking air in the atmosphere, you don't get much rising motion. So uh, other than a stray storm, let's map it out here to Friday afternoon. There's some storms and some activity along the Gulf Coast, certainly, as that thing's trying to crop up down here. doesn't really do much. But other than that, like the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, I mean, we're looking at very minimal storm chances. Here's Saturday afternoon. I mean, there's not much evidence at all going on underneath this ridge of high pressure for most of Florida. I mean, it's going to be beautiful to be out by the beach, by the lake, at a pool, 
but it's going to be just terribly, terribly hot. Let's look at those temperatures. I'm going to map it out here for you. Um, let me just show you this first. Here's an example. Here's Greenville Spartanburg Anderson. Notice how temperatures trend up. This is you could almost just pick a city on a map, and this would be the very similar for, for your town. Uh, notice the, the days are on the bottom. Okay, so here we are Saturday. Saturday's when it's next level, upper 90s to around 100 degrees. That's for most communities in, in the southeast. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're approaching triple digits. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 100, 102, 100. So three days in triple digit territory would break records for many cities. Not to mention that once you get here to Friday, a week from tomorrow, a week from today, whenever you're watching, uh, we're talking about that being the 39th or longer day in a row of 90 degrees or more. That's the longest street many have had in a very long time. And notice these low temperatures during the week. 80, 80, 81. I mean, we're talking these temperatures being way warmer than we typically see on a given night. So there's not much of a break from the heat nighttime or daytime. So what I'm trying to say here is that this heat is going to be oppressive more than just the typical. So let's map it out. It begins on our Friday. Let me show you that. Friday, we got those temperatures that get in the low to mid 90s. All right, so now we're hot again. Uh, look at Saturday. Saturday, we're 97, 96, 101. You got 90s down here in Florida. Uh, that's when it's getting dangerous again. But look at this. Here's Sunday. You got 99 in Greenville, 99 to 102 in Columbia, 102 in Charlotte, 95 in Atlanta, 97 in Charleston up to Hilton Head. You got low to mid 90s in Florida. Now, Florida comes with more humidity. Uh, the thermometer may not get as high. South Georgia from Statesboro into Savannah, 100 or so. Let's get into Monday. Lots of 100s in here. 104 showing up here in Columbia. These could be daytime records. These could be stretches for, for heat. And folks, on top of that, just specifically speaking from where I'm broadcasting from right now in Greenville, Spartanburg, and Anderson, uh, you average together our high temperatures throughout July. We're the fifth hottest so far. You, you compare that to... Uh, What's coming our way, we very well may be the hottest July on record once we get through these numbers. And then you look at the summer as a whole, we're also fifth hottest. So we're sitting there top five warmest summer ever recorded. Um, and then a heat wave's coming. So that's probably going to send a lot of us to that number one, two spot. Um, not that it's you know anything to be bragging about. That's not a good thing, right? Here's Tuesday, still sitting around 100. Looks like this heat dome starts to break down a little bit late week. Well, there's Thursday, upper 90s. Next Saturday, mid 80s. Next Sunday, low to mid 80s. That does look like that first few days of August. We're back cooling down just a bit. You see that here on the bar graph too. So extreme heat back down to below normal and below normal is mid 80s. So still hot but probably coming with better rain chances in here. And speaking of rain chances, we need to look at the tropics because that's about the only thing that, that really could give anybody a chance at anything right now because this big dome is going to take over. And we've been monitoring the satellite in a couple of different areas. And we need to stay highlighted in on what's happening deeper into the Atlantic. I know many of you are watching right now from Caribbean islands. Uh, my last video, just looking at the comments, which folks, if you can, let me know in the comment section where you're watching from. Share this with your family and friends. I had folks watching from Trinidad and Tobago. We had folks in uh, the Caribbean islands, Lesser Antilles. Jamaica had dozens of people watching right now. I thank you for that. That means a lot that you're tuning in from where you're watching from right now for a tropical update and I don't take that lightly. So let's look at what's going on deeper into the Atlantic. Now the Cape Verde Islands there's a couple of waves we need to watch and closer to the Carolinas to the southeast that big bubble of moisture does not look like it's going to develop anything. But what could? Well let's look at the models as they ran today. We'll start with the European. Does it show anything bubbling up going out into time into this upcoming week? couple of areas of lower pressure and we got this right there the operational run 
showing a little spin up here, right there. It's identifiable, but it's not strong. Okay, getting a little stronger here. This would be August 3rd. A little stronger there. That's August 5th. All right. So, so if that's all that it showed me, I'd say, okay, good. I, I've got an idea that something, something, that wave is trying to form. Okay, so that's, that's one model showing me what the pressure may be like. Okay, what about the rest of the models? I like looking at an average of them all. So what does an average of all 51 different models, what is the worst case scenario showing here? This is the member wise minimum. So this is the all 51 different runs. What's the minimum? What's the worst case scenario? The lowest pressure. All right, let's look that through. Here we go. There's that same low average of the models now. Okay, so you got you got a low right there. 998, getting closer to the Windward Islands. All right, 996, approaching Puerto Rico. 983, you got a couple other little bubbles in here. 987, what's that? 967, that's 967. 952, 947, 943. Those are big hurricanes, folks. So the European, at least the ensembles, a couple of the rogue runs here. You remember, you got 51 of them. So uh, they're showing we could have the potential of a deep hurricane here. Uh, this would be over just north of Puerto Rico. Then it would curve out, all right? But it's also got other little variations of lows in here, too. So it looks like that first week of August, we need to stay dialed in on because this model is showing our season's first hurricane could be forming that first week of August, all right? So what does the average of all the model runs say? This is the European, all 51, chances for development, okay? We've been talking about the Southern Caribbean for a while, and I need to, you to watch that in Central America here. So where are my Central America people at? We got anybody watching right now in Belize, Nicaragua? Well, you could have a little low rider here. This would be into the middle of next week. Then you got this wave that comes off the coast of Africa. This is the one that the European just hinted at. Shows uh, deeper low, stronger chances for development, and the track is, let's just call it interesting. All right, so it's, it's just north enough that it uh, wouldn't go in the Caribbean, but it's south enough that it looks like it wouldn't go toward Bermuda. So does it thread that needle, whatever this is, and go near the Bahamas and curve back up over uh, the Outer Banks? Or does it get closer to the southeast? yet to be determined, and we'll need to watch it. So let's look at the same exact model. You see this? This is the, the model, the European I just showed you, but it shows it in the form of low pressure systems, their numbers, and the tracks, okay? So um, mapping that same model out, I'm not showing you anything different, just the same one. Low pressures here, so there, there's some good uh, consensus here. Out of 51 different runs of the European, there's probably a dozen of them that have a low pressure system here. Maybe more, probably like 20, probably half. I'd say half of the European models are showing a low pressure system. This time frame is late next week. All right, so what do we go into next weekend? All right, they got something getting toward the Windward Islands. This would be next Saturday, Sunday. All right, Saturday morning. Sunday morning. And notice the numbers here. All right, there's a 975, there's a 1015. So anywhere from a cat two to a weak tropical depression. And that's as far as our model will go. All right, so it's got something here that first week of August that we need to stay dialed in on. What does it do? Where does it go from there? We've got we've to see. Does the GFS show anything? Let's map that out for all intents and purposes they say, right? Not all intent to purchase. Uh, you've got low pressure coming in. You know, it's got, it's got it going to the Caribbean. It doesn't really have much else. Got a little something cropping up there. That's similar time frame as that. Again, it's getting a little closer to South Carolina there. GFS says, uh, I'm going to keep something weaker coming up out of the Bahamas and then throw it into Myrtle Beach. All right. That's millions of miles, uh, millions of, of hours away. So, you know, take it for what that's worth. The icon here, again, identifying our wave. 
good identification on the icon. This is the German model. That gets us to early week. So that one's a little faster with that wave. It's got another one back behind it. This is the one on the European that actually takes off, not that first wave. So the icon here has that first wave wanting to take off and becoming something tropical, heading toward the Dominican Republic and Haiti, while the second wave is far enough back that it could have its own mind and, and check that out as well, all right? As we look at the outlooks for temperatures, you see a below normal one here. Now this just issued today shows that uh, by that first week of August, we could have below normal temperatures along the East Coast. So what does that tell me? Well, to get below normal temperatures in the summer, you have to have rain. You have to have a dip in the jet stream. So if there's a dip in the jet stream, does that dip steer something out? Does it grab something up and, and push it somewhere? That's what we'll have to dial in on in the days to come. But you don't just get below normal very often. I mean, we're going to be super, super hot in the next week. This is uh, the first week of August. So what changes from extreme heat this week to below normal the following week? We need to iron that out and see and what, what, what impact that may have. Because like I suspected, you don't just get above normal or I should say below normal temperatures without something to cause it. In this case, it looks like above normal precipitation for the southeast and that is a little suspect. When do you get above normal precip in the southeast? Well, this time of year it usually has some kind of tropical correlation to it, especially with a look like that. Where is it coming from? All right. So something we need to stay dialed in on in the days to come and, and you know that I will. Uh, folks, again, I really, truly appreciate wherever in the world you're watching from right now. And I said world because many of you are literally watching worldwide right now, and I appreciate that. Let me know in the comment section where you're watching from right now, and I will keep you posted because as we move deeper into hurricane season, staying up to date is going to be key because things are going to be changing around the clock. Hope you have a good day. We'll talk soon.